Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Good morning. We are so happy to be here today. I'll reintroduce. This is my son, Barlow. Hello. He's very excited to be part of this, and he's very good with, probably you guys are too, iPads and cell phones and stuff like technology. that. So, technology. This is my daughter, Sabria. Hello. She's nine, he's 11. And we are gonna read you a story that we wrote. And then we'll talk a little bit about it at the end and, and take any questions if you have any. But my son, Barlow, is going to help. He um, put together all of the sound effects. So if you wanna close your eyes and listen to the story, you can, because the sound effects hopefully will take you to the magical place that we tried to create when we wrote this story. And afterwards, I want to hear what you think the story's about. I'm very curious. Okay. So this story is called, yeah, yeah. This story is called The Treasure Pot by Kali Rosha, Savria Krikorian, and Barlow Krikorian. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful village with green hills and a river of fresh water running through the town. It was a lovely place, except that everyone was poor. They were hungry and cold because one man in town took all of the delicious supplies. His name was Bumble Greedy Kins. If delicious cabbage and carrots grew in the field, Bumble Greedy Kins would go out in the middle of the night, dig them up, and bring them back to his home, where he would lock them up in his cupboard. If a strong tree fell in the forest, Bumble Greedykins would drag it back to his home before anyone could get it and chop it up for firewood. If a new calf was born to the town cow, he would snatch it up before anyone knew and keep it for himself, fattening it up to eat when it got bigger, obviously. None of the poor townsfolk liked Bumble Greedykins. Bumble Greedykins lived in a three-story mansion made of stone and marble. It stood out because everyone else's home was worn down, falling apart, old, and in need of repair. His next-door neighbor, Farmer Puckabee, had a huge hole in his roof. His daughter had to sleep with a bucket next to her crib, falling asleep to the sound of a leaky roof. And the neighbor on the other side of Bumble Greedykins, Mr. Henderlin, had a crooked front door that was falling off of its hinges because all of its nails had fallen out. And every time the wind blew, it dropped a little further. He could hardly sleep at night. The drafts were so cold inside of his little home. And lastly, a few homes away from Bumble Greedykins lived two small children, Remy and Ruby a brother and sister who craved nothing more than to have a toy to call their own, for they had nothing. One night, as was his custom, Bumble Greedykins decided to make himself a delicious meal. He looked through his copious supply of food in his kitchen and decided on a scrumptious stew. In a big pot, he poured rich broth, then plopped in carrots, onions, fresh herbs, chicken, salt and spices. He turned on the heat and set it to cook. Sometime later, hungry, his stomach growling and ready, Bumble Greedykins went to check on his soup. Oh, he was excited to polish off the entire pot of soup himself. But when he lifted the lid, and peered into the pot, he was shocked by what he saw. Instead of a delicious vegetable and chicken stew, he saw instead a hammer and three nails. A hammer and three nails, he exclaimed. Why are there a hammer and three nails in my pot? I'm hungry and I want to eat. He was so confused and angry that he stumped across his big kitchen, holding the hammer and three nails to the balcony, stepped outside and grumpily looked around. Right below him, Mr. Henderlin was struggling to fix his little door, which was blowing in the wind and creaking on its hinges. 
For a few moments, Bumble Greedykin stood there looking down at Mr. Henderlin and the sad wooden door swinging in the wind. All at once, Mr. Henderlin looked up and saw Bumble Greedykin standing there far above him, holding the hammer and three nails. Hello up there, Mr. Henderlin said. W what have you got there? Well, Bumble Greedykins just shrugged and said, oh, just a useless hammer and three nails. I'm hungry and I want my stew, but this junk appeared instead. Mr. Henderlin thought for a moment and then said, well, I could surely use them if it's no trouble. Bumble Greedykins pondered this for a minute and then he shrugged. <laughs> it's garbage to me, take it. He tossed the hammer and three nails over the balcony and Mr. Henderlin scrambled to collect them then set about fixing his creaky front door. An hour later, he was tucked cozily inside for the first time in years. No wind, no cold. Meanwhile, Bumble Greedykins trudged back inside and straight to the waiting soup. Ooh, he licked his lips, imagining the scrumptious taste of it. But when he lifted the lid, inside he saw not a rich soup, but much to his disgust, this time he saw a piece of wood, the size of a shingle. Goodness, this is the last straw. Oh, I suppose Farmer Puckaby next door will want this to cover the hole in his roof. Why, I may as well just, just give it to him before he asks. I certainly have no need for this pathetic piece of wood. With that, he stormed over to the farmer's house, banged on the door, and hollered, oh, I suppose you'll be wanting this junk too for your leaky roof. When the door opened, it was Farmer Puckaby's wife holding her crying infant daughter. I, I, I'm sorry, my daughter can't sleep with all this rain, she said. Bumble Greedy Kims looked moved for a moment and then mumbled, well, I hope this wood helps, nothing but a Useless scrap of wood, I'll go up and put it on your roof now. Bum Farmer Puckaby's wife blinked tears of shock and gratitude and Bumble Greedykin scrambled onto the roof and fixed it. An hour later, Farmer Puckaby, his wife and their tiny daughter were sleeping soundly and dry for the first time in years. As Bumble Greedykins was storming back to his home, now hungrier and angrier than ever, he saw the two children who lived up the lane, playing sadly in the road by the front of the house. Little Ruby was rolling a small stone to her brother, which Remy would knock with a thin twig. They marked the spot where the pebble landed, then traded places to play the game all over again. Bumble Greedykins stopped to watch them for a moment in spite of himself and felt something in his heart that confused him. Those poor children, he thought, they have no toys to play with except a pebble and a twig. Why, I had chests of toys when I was their age, trunks of games and closets of things to play with. Ruby and Remy didn't notice him standing there, feeling sorry for them, a feeling so unfamiliar to Bumble Greedykins that he actually thought it was a cold coming on. <laughs> By the time Bumble Greedykins reached his kitchen, he realized with surprise that he was no longer actually hungry. He was tired and confused by the kindness blossoming in his heart that he wanted to clean up and just go to bed. So he reached for the pot and jumped back when he saw what was inside, a wooden train, a doll sewn from the most beautiful fabric with shining eyes and silken ringlets and two books plus two warm, freshly buttered biscuits. Without even hesitating, Bumble Greedykins grabbed the pot and its contents and ran down the stairs. Huffing and puffing, he ran up to the two children, thrusting the pot towards them excitedly. Children, oh, children, here are some treasures I thought you might like, for you have nothing, nothing but that pebble and twig to play with. Would you like them? Would you like to take them home with you? Ruby and Remy stood in front of Bumble Greedykins, shocked and surprised. They had only known him to be a grumpy, greedy, selfish old man whom no one talked to and made fun of behind his back. The whole town knew he thought of no one but himself, kept all the fresh vegetables and fallen wood and fat calves the town had. But the children saw that Bumble Greedykins was offering them something lovely and generous and kind 
and they wanted to believe that he really, truly was giving them what he held out to them. They looked into his eyes and saw a kindness there they hadn't noticed before. They saw a sweetness to Bumble Greedykins that they knew was real, no matter what they had seen before. So Ruby and Remy reach for the treasures within the pot with their small hands. Thank you, sir, said Ruby. Yes, thank you so very much, Mr. Greedykins, said Remy. Bumble Greedykins watched the children hold the toys, books and biscuits tightly smiling as they walked up the lane. <laughs> the next morning, Bumble Greedykins woke after a deep, restful night's sleep. The first thing he heard was strange, unfamiliar sounds from the street below his window. He threw his windows open and for the first time in memory saw the entire town outside in the street laughing and talking. It was a beautiful sight and Bumble Greedykins felt a lump in his throat. Then he smelled a delicious aroma throughout his home, lifting the lid of his pot. Bumble Greedykins let out a gasp for now the pot was full to the brim with scrumptious, rich, delicious smelling stew. It was the soup he had been waiting for. He knew what to do. With thick mittens on his hands, tin bowls tucked under his arm, he grabbed the pot and ran down those stairs. Out into the street to the crowd below. Friends, he shouted. Friends, join me for my delicious stew. I have far more than I need and I want to share it with all of you good people. The crowd cheered and clapped. And they grabbed the bowls scooping up the heavenly goulash, thanking Bumble Greedy Kings. The whole town celebrated together, grateful that one magic pot could change the heart of a man. The end. Yay. That was awesome. Look at you got applause. Everyone is applauding. Yay, thank you. Yay, yay, yay. <clears throat> So I wanted to say a little bit, and then I want to see what you guys thought. Um, so we wrote this story because we were thinking, especially right now when everyone has to stay inside and be thinking about their own health and stuff, but we wrote it because we wanted to write a story about um, a man, and this is often the way fairy tales go, and we think of this as a fairy tale, but um, as someone who started off one way, and then their heart softened and they became a better human being because of what they saw. And they realized they shouldn't make judgments about other people and that they were poor or that they had a leaky roof or that they had a door that wasn't right. So we wanted to write a little story about inclusion in that way and um, about assumptions about people that Mr. That Bumble Greedykins thought, oh, well, everybody else is so greedy and blah, blah, blah. And then he realized that giving something actually made him feel so much better and that the universe rewarded him because, of course, as you saw, every time he opened the pot, it wasn't his soup. It was another thing that could help his neighbor. And then when he no longer was hungry, he opened the pot and sure enough, there was a huge bowl of soup in there that he shared with his neighbors. So that's kind of what we were going for with the story. Did you guys like it? Yeah. Yes. It was fantastic. Do you, I'm looking to see if anybody has anything to raise, um, any questions. Any I should add that my son, Barlow, so I, I wrote, we wrote the story and then went through it and he found all of the sound effects. How did you find those? So uh, I, I went on YouTube and I looked up every sound effect we needed. There's this thing called screen record. You guys might know it where you record the screen of whatever you're using and it picks up the sound too. So I did that for every sound I needed. You show? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so I put it into this app called iMovie and combined it every sound to this is one video with sound. This you want to play it? Yeah, play one. And then the next, leave it for the next one too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the shoveling one. So yeah, I combined that and my mom tapped me every time I needed to play a sound. Yeah, you so. probably couldn't see, but under the table I was tapping his knee. Yeah. So for the next cue. 
because so, I could read what was happening. Yeah, I combined it. Um, yeah. Um, I see, uh, Marcy, is it okay for me to read this? Sure. It says, I, see, I would love to hear how your families are giving to, oh, sorry, you, you read. Maybe I'm not reading the right ones. Uh, oh, no, well, no. she said she would love to hear how other families are um, giving yeah. to others right now, maybe. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, I'd love to hear that too. Right now, everybody needs a little help. So I know Tess, if Tess, are you still on there? Tess and I were talking about how to help other families. Morgan is on, but I don't know if Tess is still yeah. on. There's Morgan. Uh, yeah, my mom's off it, I think, now. Okay. Uh, well, but I, I know a lot of people online, you know, are reaching out, and if they need help, I know if we have elderly neighbors who might um, not be able to get out, if we can help them by picking up groceries for them or, you know, ordering groceries online for them, um, helping them any way we can. Um, Kali and I are neighbors, and I will just share that her husband is quite the baker, and he baked us a loaf of bread, and in return, I made them homemade chicken tenders. <laughs> so, nice. just, yeah. You know, still trying to do neighborly things as we can. Zachary said, that was pretty cool sound you guys did. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. Yeah, so, you know, everybody can come up with creative ways to, um, to write stories at home, and Kali gave some great suggestions of, of how to create a story, and you, can, you guys can create your own stories based on your own families or talk about uh, anything. Inclusion, kindness, especially in this day and age right now is really important. So thank you so much, Kali. I really appreciate you taking the time to, to create that story, and um, Vincent is still clapping for you. So thank you guys very much. Thank you, Vincent. We had fun. Thank you so yes. much. We're really honored to be part of this. Thank, thank you. you.